Welcome to episode number 150 of the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media and presented to you by our friends over at SeatGeek, Austin Hedges of the Cleveland Guardians. Your episode number 150, that is a big deal in a young man's life. Is that your life? Uh, big deal for your life? I'm more middle-aged life. You're still a young man. I'm 30 now, man. I don't know. Yeah. What's the t-shirt we've got? This is... A little Cleveland thing. Yeah. I think Hosey's got a uh, uh, a chain of this guy. Yeah, of course he does. Cool. He's got a chain of everything. He does, even of his own face. Yes, that is the best one, by the way, it right? It is. It's cool. I wish I, was, I wish I had enough swag to be able to do that. How great would that be if they had the Austin Hedges flowing locks on a chain and you were actually wearing that <laughs> while you're behind the dish? <laughs> Holy shit. That'd be good. There it is. There's the Jose Ramirez chain on a chain. The chain of him wearing a chain. So. Then I think he's wearing a chain in the picture, too. Is that correct? Yes. So it's yeah. three versions of a chain. Yeah, Why not? Just go for it. Let's go for it. All right. Uh, we are recording this on a Wednesday. So you guys just took the first of a big three-game set in Chicago. Two weeks to go in the season. You guys have a five-game lead. Essentially, it's six because you won the season series. I remember when we started this, you told me that you've never made the playoffs on any sort of team during a full season. So where are you kind of emotionally? I know, let's take the cliches out of this. We're not done. We haven't done it. I get it. But where's your headspace right now? Aren't you excited? Yeah, I'm having a blast, man. It's uh, It's so cool. I mean, it feels like, the thing for us is that all season has been like, like a playoff run. We, we're not, we don't, we're not, we don't have the luxury of having a team that can just show up on a field and is just naturally better than everybody. And we can just show up and win. We have to go on and, uh, and, and play real baseball and we have to play playoff type baseball, which isn't just, you know, relying on homers and big innings here and there. We're manufacturing runs. We're pitching, we're playing defense. So the nice thing is uh Nothing really changes for us, but man, is it exciting, uh, especially this series right here going out last night in, in Chicago, hostile environment, uh, facing Dylan Cease, one of the best pitchers in baseball. Um, man, it is, uh, I'm having a, a lot of fun right now. So we've also talked about this. It's you, Maley, and Shar, the only guys that are older than 30 in the youngest clubhouse in the entire major leagues. How exhausted are you right now? Because you guys have played a shitload of baseball. I think you've played a dozen doubleheaders, including most recently on Saturday, where the second game of a twin billing went 15 innings where you scored the final run. Are there days where you just like fall down on your bed and you're like, holy shit, I don't know if I can do this tomorrow. <laughs> that day was a that day was a tough one. That was one of the longer days. I don't even know if uh that's got to be close to a record with the new rule on second base, isn't it? Do you, what's the record for extra innings? Might be. I mean, 15's got to be right up there. And the fact it's that nobody, there, I, nobody scored a run in innings 10 through 14, right? We scored uh, One run was scored. They scored, I believe, in the 13th. They scored uh, one. Ahmed Rosario got a two-out base hit to tie right. it and then came all the way back up to win it because uh, he's, uh, he's awesome. Uh, yeah, that was, that was one of the longer days of my career, uh, especially having to show up and catch a day game the next day. Uh, I think it was, I think I ended up catching 25 innings in 24 hours. Oh, what, how do you, how do you physically feel after that? Uh, you know, physically, I feel okay. Physically. Okay. Mentally there's that's that's kind of where the grind goes. There's so many decisions that are made uh, and I take each decision so seriously because, you know, what one decision in the first inning is no, it's no more or less important than a decision in the ninth inning. There's still decisions that are made that can cost runs and one run is the difference in the game a lot of the time. So it's just the decision-making aspect is kind of like, whoo, man, like that was a lot of decisions to make. And then to show up the next day, another day game, get her going again. Um, but I love it. Uh, it. I'll tell you what, it's a hell of a lot more fun when uh, when the games matter and you're trying to win a division, make a playoff push, uh, than, than not really being in it. 
Um, but physically, like when you're squatting that long, if you're catching 25 innings in 24 hours, it doesn't hurt or anything. Like, I mean, I do the, I do the one knee stance, you know, uh, I, I, I pretend like it's for an advantageous thing for, you know, receiving and blocking, but it's really to just take a break off my legs. Cause I'm lazy and don't really want to squat that long. So the one knee stance ends up helping me out, saving me a little bit. Okay. So I don't know. I mean, I know you're a football fan. You're a charger guy, but there's a guy in Cleveland, Nick Chubb, the pro bowl running back for the Browns who squatted like six forty in the off season had like the bendy bar is do you because of your particular job are you a squatter you know what i mean i am i am a i'm a squatter i'm a deadlifter uh all the things to to make your legs last uh that's really what it comes down to you can't really get after it in the weight room as much as you'd like to during the season just because it's so long and you got to play um that day my goodness <laughs> is that crazy we're show, for people that are audio only we're showing the nick chubb 640 squat that's so many plates. <laughs> yeah, I don't do anything like that. I probably, I got about, I got a couple plates on there, but yeah, you got, you got to, you got, you got to get it all out of the way in the off season where to, to make your legs last. So uh, I like to get after it a little bit with the squats and the deadlifts. So I don't have to do quite as much during the season. Got it. And now a word from our sponsor, better help. Mental health has taken center stage and oh so much for the better over the last decade, I would say. People have become so much more accepting when people say, hey, listen, I need help at some point in my life. And so better help is there to line you up with the therapist of your choice. They set you up and they figure out if that relationship is going to work. And then if it does, you're going to feel so much better about life in general. I can just tell you this. I have actually been in therapy ever since I was a little kid, ever since like the 1970s. And back then, people didn't talk about mental health the way that they do today. So if you said something about being in therapy, people would look at you like, oh, well, what's the matter with you? Thankfully, we don't have that stigma today. And we have so much going on in our lives. I mean, look at where we've been the last two and a half years because of the pandemic. We've been isolated. We haven't been able to see family. We haven't been able to see friends. We've Some people have lost jobs. Some people have lost where they live. Some people have lost loved ones. So how do you deal with that loss? Sometimes it's too much to deal with it on your own. I think it's not a sign of weakness. If you ask for help, it is actually a sign of strength. And that's where BetterHelp can lend a helping hand, okay? So go to betterhelp.com slash rotation for 10% off of your first order. They're going to line you up with a therapist. And oh, by the way, that doesn't mean it's a marriage between you two. If it's not working out, they're going to find somebody else. The important thing is taking that first step. And if you need help, go ask for help. Go to betterhelp.com slash rotation for 10% off your first order today. Uh, offensively, you have significantly improved since your last few performances on the Rose rotation. We aren't going to take credit for that. We'll give some of the credit to you. I love seeing you on base because of the way you run. And Josh and Brady, my two sons whom you have both met, are like, he runs a lot like you, Dad. And there was a particular play at the plate where I don't know if you were deciding to go old school and try and run over the catcher or what happened, but you almost like fell on top of the plate. Um, what happened? Everyone tries to tell me that it looks like I fell. I mean, I think that's about as athletic as it gets. I'm <laughs> flying home. I mean, I'm running at an elite speed. So everything's moving quickly. You know, there's going to be a close play. We need the run. I see Stassi bobble it. So I got to send at least a little bit of an elbow in there to maybe disrupt a little bit. And, there you go. Ball's dropped. I score. Quan gets an RBI. Helps the guards win. That is graceful. I imagine that you caught a lot of shit when you got back to the dugout on that one, didn't you? We've got a we've got a wall in our in our batting cage with just a bunch of pictures. It's kind of like our like team like family room. So it's there's some family pictures, and then there's all kinds of funny shit that has happened throughout the year. And so they took a nice uh, they took a nice uh, screenshot of that one where like it like. My knee is on the ground and I'm kind of, my hands are still in the air. It's a really bad angle. Kind of looks like I'm just falling forward. Uh, and then Maley, Luke Maley decided next to it 
Uh, Cause him and I have an ongoing joke about who's faster. Cause I obviously think I'm faster and he thinks he's faster. Sadly, StatCast does not lie. Um, and he is faster than me on average by about 0.2 feet per second. And so he put that number right next to that picture. I'm a little upset. I feel like him and I need to do a race. Um, but sadly, he might be a touch faster. Well, we could always do a – you probably haven't done a 60 since one of those showcases or something like that is my guess, right? Which is silly. Why are we doing 60s in baseball? It's got to well, be like a 30. A 30. But isn't the whole idea of what we just saw where you start the, the play on second base? Yeah, well, I'm rounding a base. So what's a running in a straight line going to do? I was running a straight line. I'm running way faster. Me specifically, way faster. What's way? Sub like seven? at least, at least like a mile an hour faster. Do you remember your 60 time? Yeah, man, it's not good. Do you want to share? I believe going into, uh, I'd have been like area codes or something like that. The area codes. Uh, I believe I was like a seven, eight. You are awesome. That is so good. Did your I used to be fast. I used to be fast. What, it was taken was away that? from me. Like, here's what happened. I was a seventh grade flag football quarterback. Obviously, great athlete. Mobile quarterback, running a lot of, uh, you know, power option plays. In seventh grade, I'm running circles around kids. No one can catch me. Eighth grade comes around. We got the same playbook. We're dominating. Go for the first run play. And I'm wide open, like a bootleg, running down the line. And I look up, and, like, the entire team has now just ran in front of me and caught up to me and got me. And I was like, whoa, oh, no. And we did it again, and then everyone was way faster than me again. And that was it. It was, like, right around between, like, 13 and 14 years old, my speed went, see ya. By the way, according to perfectgame.org, you ran a 704 in 2010. Is that possible? 704? Dude, that's perfect game boosting some numbers for sure. That's that's what happened. You know, they wanted to make me look a little bit sexier. Maybe after I made the big leagues, they wanted to make me, you know, give my score a little bit better. But they def it definitely wasn't 704 at the time. There's no shot. Oh my God. A 60 yard dash, 704. So your what does that say? Your C velo is that your what is that? Your catcher velo, eighty five behind the plate, pretty good, pretty good for a seventeen year old. And your pop time one seven five. Man, I used to be good. You're still good. You stopped that young man. I'll tell you, your athleticism really came into play in that series up in Minnesota. Uh, really weird inning. Oh. Karen checks on the mound and it starts with a first pitch pop up toward the twins dugout. I thought you had died. I think everyone did. I think uh, I've been, I've been battling a bit of a, of an ankle uh, for pretty much the whole season. So I think everyone thought the ankle was definitely snapped right there. Uh, no, just my elbow just absolutely smacked the concrete. Uh, but Hey, look at that. Tough to make a top 10 play as a catcher. I got a few of them now. Do, did it upset you that nobody in the Twins dugout was there to save you? Not even a little bit because, you know, I wouldn't have done I wouldn't have done anything either. It's not, you know, if someone's falling in and trying to make a play, maybe eventually you maybe help a little bit. But I don't know. You don't want to get in the way of someone trying to make a play. It, it happens fast. I mean, once again, remember how fast I am. So the whole play happened really really fast so i can understand how some of them were like holy smokes that what just happened it all happened fast so that's understandable uh yeah every you don't you don't want to get in the way of a play because you don't want to help the other team uh, that and it's just like it's not your responsibility can we You're stop just... with the bullshit that's not fair you're a human being could you imagine well, not, if you would you if not you on the baseball your field. ankle on the baseball field, I am a product. We all are a product on a baseball field. Sadly, that is the reality. We are human beings once we step off the field. But on the field, 
just like the White Sox fans reminded us, <laughs> we are just a product. What they, does that mean? Oh, they're they are ruthless. It was a it was a crazy environment last night. They uh they can they can let you have it a little bit because you're just you're just it's like it's like you're watching TV. You're watching live television at a ball game. It's just a just a product. The Cleveland Guardians product versus whoever you're playing's product. That's just that's you know. That's if you want, if, just look yourself in the mirror and just be like, hey, what, what's the reality of what's happening here? That's actually what's happening here. That's okay, really? though. That's, 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 that's the way it is. That's life. So, you know, right. if you don't like were it. Were they yelling at you? Profession. What were they yelling at you? Uh, <laughs> they, they don't like us. They just don't like us um, very much, um, especially now that we've won the season series. Um, but they had they had choice words that that got quite a few of them kicked out. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out like what's appropriate to say. I it's, heard it's, one. I heard one. <laughs> I heard one woman say we have small wieners. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, she came out and she was like, "Hey, you small dicked guardians." Is that like? No, it was like she 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 double birded. She double birded and said, "You got small dicks." And there was another lady yelling all game that apparently you could hear on the broadcast. It was so loud, just you to be casual. Hey, Naylor, you suck! <laughs> all game, all game. It was great. And I imagine Nails hears every part of that. Oh, he eats it up and then makes him play great. He lives for it. Oh, my God. How do you not just laugh your ass off during stuff like that? Oh, man, it's so funny. It's so funny. We had our, our security, our, our, like, main security guard that uh, that's – he's ex-Secret uh, Service. Uh, he, he was in the stands, like, helping get people out. That's like – I mean, guys were literally leaning their heads over our dugouts, like, point at you. You're a bitch. Hey, you, you're a bitch. Okay. See, product. Fan, product. Away from the field, human, human. That's how it works. That's the dynamic of life. So you dig it doesn't it doesn't bother you, huh? Well, no, because it's reality. Like uh, it's not if everyone had the right perspective, but the way the world works with television, media, all these things, it is that that is what we are hmm. when we're playing. And when it's not treated that way, when we're not playing, that's when it crosses the line, you know, outside the hotel, uh, you know, just in, in, in real life, that's where it crosses the line. But on the field, we signed up for it. You know, everyone lives for it. Everyone loves talking about, you know, it's a, it's, it's a cool thing to talk about fans talking shit, players talking shit. Like that's, that's part of what we're doing. And once you step off the lines and you go home, then it's done. Then we're back to being humans. We're humans together. Uh, like our, us as teammates, we look at each other. We're not a bunch of products to each other, but I think you're lying to yourself. If you can't tell, if you can't think that the rest of the world is viewing you as what you are, at least huh. in that moment. Okay. Interesting perspective. See, I don't, I, I will admit when I was 17 years old, we used to have Cavs season tickets and it was one of the first years where the Cavs were good in the late eighties. And we were taking on the Pistons who were like the champs. And we had a huge game against them. And they had Bill Lane Beer. I don't know if you remember that name, Bill Lane Beer. Big, bad, white guy, good player, good shooter, good rebounder, but one of the total, like, assholes of the NBA. Hated by everybody outside of Detroit. I screamed as a 17-year-old from my seat, Lane Beer, you fucking pussy! Screamed! And everybody turned around and looked at me like, what is your problem? And I was like, I felt like such an asshole and I never did it again. And I remember that I'm being 17. I was like, I can't do that. Like even the, what would have happened if the fans turned around and were like, yeah, he is a fucking pussy. Then you probably would not be where you are today. And you would just be a rowdy fan going to white Sox games, calling people pussies. That's probably it. You're probably right. That moment is a big deal in your life. Isn't it? I, I, I just realized that that's pretty cool. So I don't, I think it's okay to boo. And say whatever. I think when you start to get personal and stuff like that, it's stupid. Like, I love it when Durant talks shit back to people in the front row. 
where like they start yelling at him and he'll turn around and he'll be like, you shut the fuck up. I love that. I dig I mean, that. Yeah, I, I like, I, I think you should say whatever you want. I think, cause here's the thing. It works as a fan. It works. I wish our entire Cleveland on the, especially on like the away side, like talk shit, just the whole game. We do. I can hear it. Sometimes they get after it. It works. So when you go to hostile environments, it works. It get just thought you cannot, if I put, if, if I said something to you, you can't not think about it. If I said something, especially if I said something accurate and truthful, mm. like about your numbers, if someone wants to talk about my batting average and they're not lying and you know who hears it and you know who already knew that and you know who wants it to be different, me. So I hear it, I log it. Like you have to be really mentally tough in this game for, for those reasons too. Yeah. Because it's real. Like when a fan says something, it, you log it as a huge, now that's where the human aspect does come into it. As a human being, I feel like, damn, that one kind of hurt. I'm going to rub it off and not show any reaction uh, because I'm a professional, but I got to be really mentally tough to get that out of my head to not continue to think that that fan just said something accurate to me and hurt my feelings. Because mm. ain't no, you can't go out there and expect to dominate a big league game with hurt feelings. Come on now. You got to grow up. Check your feelings, go out there and go be a man about it. And so and, and and if you can't, then the fan won. And I assume that's you know, places like Chicago, New York, Boston, like uh, they play good there, and other guys maybe don't, partially for that reason. Because some things might be said to some guys that they go, damn, that was right, and I am gonna go strike out right now. And then it happens and boom. Interesting. Hey, everybody, support for today's episode of the Rose Rotation comes from these guys. True Classic. Yeah, they bring you true classic tees. I'm talking about the absolute best-fitting T-shirt that a man can buy. On top of everything else, I am telling you, they are super soft. You have heard me talk about it ad nauseum on this show about how I've got really itchy skin and my mom used to buy me clothes when I was little and I'd put them on and I was like, Mom, it's too itchy. Well, now when I order my True Classic Great Fit and Tees, they are soft so I can go about my business. I'm not sweating out the gourd and I'm just feeling oh so good. On top of that, they look great whether you spend hours and hours on the gym and you got to be a tough guy and you got to flex or if you got a dad bod like me. It doesn't matter because they fit great and they look amazing. And today, if you go on over to trueclassic.com, you can use the code word ROSE. You're going to get 25% off of your order for a limited time. So go out and do it. They've got an array of colors. I've got black. I've got navy. I've got this gray. I've got a green one that's really cool. So it's one-stop shopping to help expand your wardrobe, make yourself feel great, because you are going to look great. They've got uh, shirts for tall guys. They've got triple XL sizing. So whatever you look like, it is this simple. You want to feel good when you're out there in public or with that somebody special that you love. And we can hook you up by heading to trueclassic.com, code word rose, get 25% off your offer today. That same game where you fell down the stairs at Target Field, later that frame, Rocco Baldelli called for a lice check on James Karen check. And so Teddy Parrott, the home plate umpire, has to come out. And it looked like, as, as John Boy said in his breakdown, it looked like he was petting a cat. How did you, you were the catcher? How did you not crack up during this whole thing? Uh, I wish I was uh, in a headspace to be able to laugh because in the heat of the moment, I was not happy with what was happening. Um, I didn't think it was handled very well and professionally, but uh, in hindsight, I probably should have just laughed it off and saw that this is a pretty comical thing happening on a big league baseball field. Dude, the fact it was Teddy Barrett, too, the guy who used to spar with Mike Tyson, who's oh, yeah. going through. I mean, it's hilarious. It is hilarious because Ted is Ted's one of a kind. He's one of he's one of the best umpires to ever do it. He's a total badass and he handled it so well. He's just like, I'm over there ta- trying to tell him <laughs> what's happening. And I, he literally is just giving him like a, a like a scalp massage. <laughs> what were you saying? 
I was just <laughs> trying to tell him like, uh, like, come on, like, what are we doing here? Like my guy's allowed to use sweat and rosin. Those are the, so basically that's the rule. So with all the things that have happened, you can, you can use sweat from your hair and you can use rosin. And, and my guy, Chuck likes to, likes to use sweat and rosin. He just is a little more animated about it than other people. And uh, the twins didn't like that very much. And he strikes a lot of guys out. So I don't blame him. You said you wish it had been handled better. How should it have been handled better? I just thought the way he came out from the, from the dugout was a little bit aggressive where it could have just, you can just go up to the umpire. Cause I understand like you're watching some things, there weird things happen. You can go up to the umpire and ask him to check him. That's the rule. Um, I thought a couple things, um, the way he went about it was, was with the intent of embarrassing our pitcher. Um, and I think that, um, you know, if we're talking about human element, that type of stuff, you know, player manager, like guys on the field, you don't need to do something to embarrass someone. Um, especially when they were doing nothing wrong. Um, so that, that was, the, that was what kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Uh, in hindsight, I don't care. Um, two things about it. Uh, one, I wish he wouldn't have come out in the middle of an at bat. I thought that was kind of Bush league. Um, I think if you do it, if you have a problem with him, you do it at the beginning of an at bat. I also thought what Cal Quantrill said afterward is very interesting. There are no repercussions to being wrong to accusing somebody. Like, what happens? Are we just going to sit here and keep accusing guys every time somebody comes out and does something a little quirky? Like what? There's no risk for the other team, the accusers. Yeah, you. it's especially in a way that that that, that went. It was just like... There was, there was definitely some type of intent to, to embarrass a guy um, and, uh, and, and play, play some mind games that, you know, whether they work or not, uh, it, just, it, it seemed like a, a bit of a reach. Um, but, yeah, I think, I, I think moving forward, that should be a thing. If guys, if you feel like you need to go challenge something and stop the, the flow of the baseball game, especially in a big moment, you know, that was like the eighth or ninth inning. These are big – this is a big situation – you want to stop the pace of play like that for that reason there should be you know lose a challenge uh something that definitely should be talked about by major league baseball to um just keep some accountability okay um karen check is an interesting character he's very ticky on the mound uh he gets fired up when he does well which is great he had a chance to close out a game recently and it was more than hey here's a high five for my catcher it was he jumped in the arms. It was almost like the old Odell Beckham Jr. Eli Manning commercial where, you know, he forgot to dab me up. Yeah. He, he's going high five and nails. And then he's, and then he's in the, then he's in the high five line. I'm looking around. I'm like, you ever watched a big league game before kid? What do you do? You dab up the catcher, pitcher, catcher. Come on. And so I'm sitting there like this and he, he realizes what he did. He comes sprinting over and jumps. I wasn't ready for him to jump. I'm honestly surprised he didn't knock me over. Cause uh, he's a strong, he's a strong man that, uh, that Karen check. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, he, uh, his energy is awesome. Uh, man. And, and man, is he good? Really fun. He has been good. Um, since we last spoke, there have been some rule changes that will be implemented next year. Uh, there's the pitch clock. There's the bigger bases. There's getting rid of the shift. Do you think that will, um, increase the value of good defensive catchers more so than ever. At least in the throwing aspect, you're going to have to be, you're going to have to be quicker and more accurate uh, on throwing with the bigger bases. Cause that's those, uh, how many inches is the difference? Three, three inches, three inches is, is a lot, you know, uh, in our game is a game of inches. And I know every, every time you see a, a replay, right. We're talking about, we're talking about one inch, two inches, three inches is, is a big difference. So that's, that'll definitely impact that. Um, you know, we'll see one of, one of the big things for catchers, you know, uh, it's going to be really interesting um, if they decide to go to an automated strike zone, because if they do decide to do that, that will significantly decrease the, uh, the value of a defensive catcher because it's the one thing that happens the most for a catcher other than calling a pitch. 
it's kind of how I look at it is like, like to, the to, catching totem pole is game calling, receiving, blocking, throwing. It's the things that happen the most, right? That's the only reason mm-hmm. you call them. You call a pitch every single pitch. You catch pitches the second most times. You block balls the third most, and you make throw attempts the fourth most, and significantly less than all the other things. You know, I got probably 50, 60 stolen base attempts against me this year. And I've probably caught thousands of pitches. And I've probably blocked hundreds of pitches. And I've called tens of thousands of pitches at this point. So you take away the second pillar, that will, so that's, the catching position will vastly change defensively with that, if, if that becomes a possibility as well. Um, where then throwing will probably jump blocking. It'll be wow. game calling, throwing, blocking. Because you'll just get to get, you just, you just, receiving won't matter. Blocking will be important, but guys are going to start stealing more where I think you're going to want a guy that can call a game and that can throw even more so than block and catch. Interesting. Okay. So it, it will change. I don't, I don't know. I could be wrong, um, but it will definitely, the position will change um, if that happens. The bases won't impact it though. The, the throwing will matter more, but it still is going to happen so significantly less than all the other things that happen for a catcher. And by the way, just so we get our math right, it's three inches per base. So you're getting three inches further off of first base, presumably. And three inches closer on second when we're talking about a stolen base. Six inches so, is 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 a big deal. It's a big deal. A big... You got guys wearing the the oven mitts to slide in. I mean, that's an extra couple oh, inches. Yeah. So you know, bases plus oven mitts. We're talking about. If we're we're flirting with. We're, we got three quarters of a foot. Is this a cooking show? I'm confused. <laughs> what are we doing now? That's a, that's a great point. It's a great point. Hey, Rose Rotationers, the NFL action is in full swing here at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. We're talking touchdowns, big plays, and even bigger winnings. New customers can bet just $5 on any NFL team to win and get $200 in free bets if they do. If that's not enough to tickle your fancy, everyone can boost their winnings with DraftKings stepped-up same-game parlays. Right now, for every leg you add, you can boost your winnings up to 100%. With payouts bigger than ever, why bet on football anywhere else? I don't know. I do it all on DraftKings. You should too. To make things even sweeter, you can throw down a stepped-up same-game parlay once per game day all season long. Download DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code ROSE to get $200 in free bets if your team wins when you place a $5 bet on any football game. That's promo code ROSE only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Now back to the show. As a catcher, would you, let's say your team was out of it. You're not fighting for anything. Would you like to be behind the plate when Aaron Judge has a chance to hit 62 or Albert Pujols has a chance to hit 700? Yes and no. No, because, you know, I watch, I watch, you know, MLB Network Sports Center almost every night, and I have been on so many damn highlights. I make Sports Center MLB Network almost every night, but it's usually me catching, giving up a homer or hitting being one of someone's strikeouts. So the highlights aren't necessarily, I'm there, I'm on TV. Look, 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 mom, it's me. God, that uh, was not what we wanted, was it? God, but I was on TV though, you saw it. Uh, so that, cool. I'd be on a forever highlight reel. But is it a cool highlight reel? Not really. I've been, I, I've caught for, I've had a handful of situations where uh, a big moment could happen. Uh, the most recent I can remember was, Miguel Cabrera last year going for his 500th home run. I believe he was flirting with 3,000 as well. He it wasn't. I don't think he was ever up to bat. No, because that happened this year. Yeah, that happened this year. But it was like there was still like he was flirting with that, but more so was the there was he was up with the homers and they were 
switching out the baseballs every at bat for him. They had these special markings on them for, for Miggy to, so they could know uh, this was the ball yep. uh, for this home run. Uh, and I, I wanted Miggy to do it so bad, but at least in that moment, I couldn't necessarily tell you why I just, I didn't want it to be us. I was like, no, you do it next series. You can do it next series. So I don't know. It's, um, it's, it's, I would, but at the same time, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to be catching with that view of history. Um, you know, 700 homers is unbelievable. And what judge is doing, uh, I don't even know which one's better. I, I honestly don't know which one's, which one's more impressive. I well, you're a baseball you. fan. Which one's more impressive to you? It's equal. It, it, it's like, it's so crazy. Cause it's like 700 homers. There's a really good chance. It's not done in our lifetime again, hmm. 62 homers, really good chance is not done in our lifetime. These are two things that are like, I can't like, it's like watching, like think, think about uh, the guys that have hit high forties, low fifties, mid fifties homers in a season. Like when Stanton was doing it too. Uh, it feels like they're hitting homers every night and judge is doing it at an even crazier rate. It's like, Given, given the division they play in, the ballpark they play in, how great of a hitter he is, how he can take advantage of some things, you know, like he, he's a guy that can hit a, a ton of home runs, but it's tough for a perfect situation to go to the perfect player to actually be able to, to set a record like the, like the American League home run record. And then also to play long enough to even possibly get to 700 home runs like Albert, who had to play for 20 plus years and have to hit homers at a rate when he's significantly older and more probably more miles on his body than when he's 30 years old and was going to go out and hit 40 home runs no matter what. So I think it's, it's a flip of the coin. I think they're both, I hope so bad that they both do it. Um, I think it'll be so good for baseball. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for both of them hard. What do you consider the single season home run record? 73. Why? Because that's what it is. You don't have a problem with PEDs? I do. I don't I don't like it, but it's a part of our game that I mean, if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna not be on one person's side, then you gotta be not on the side of quite a few baseball players that are even still currently playing. It's 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 a it's sadly it's a common enough thing that plenty of guys are doing it, uh, and plenty of guys are getting caught and what there's no asterisks they've never done anything um it happened it happened so it's the record and in just in your mind i mean i know it is the record just in my mind I, and you, it, the argument on the other side i totally understand I and honestly too. you could probably convince me that you're that that there should be an asterisk or something like that but the reality is that it's not and it happened and it's also good for baseball that it happened. That was great. I mean, the, the McGuire Sosa home run race that was going on literally saved the game of baseball. That was one of the greatest things to ever happen to our sport. So people might have a lot of bad things to say about that, but it helped. What well, yes, Bonds did. did helped baseball. We're, we're, not, we're not a sport that just can show up every single Sunday like the NFL and be the most popular sport. Certain things got to happen and certain players need to be extra special, regardless of what's going on, uh, to make our sport more relevant and for fans to be into it. And what Pujols and Judge are doing is helping our sport immensely, uh, just like regardless of how it happened, Bonds, McGuire, and Sosa helped our sport. Some people might have not liked it, but attention, media coverage, all the stuff that actually makes you relevant helped the sport. Do you even remember it? Because you were probably six or seven when it happened. I do. I do. I remember it only because I was a big McGuire fan. Um, I liked Sosa too, but I had, a, I had multiple Big Mac posters in my room as a kid. I remember that year, uh, went to a ball game with my parents, uh, Dodger game. And my dad was a diehard Dodger fan. And I, I'll never forget because he's like, I just want the Dodgers to win, Gagne to get a save, and McGuire to hit a homer. McGuire goes backside homer, Dodgers win, Gagne comes in, gets a save. It was the it was a it was a perfect day to watch a ball game. It's nice. I remember I was living in Atlanta at the time. 
Michelle and I flew up to Cleveland and we were playing the Cardinals. It was in the middle of the summer. He was in the thirties at that point, home run chase wise, but you knew something special was happening. I was like, I hope we kick their ass and I want to see a McGuire Homer. And that's exactly what happened. I couldn't have been happier. He just was, it really it's was pretty incredible. crazy, man. So I've, uh, you know, I was, I was lucky enough to, to have him as a coach for a few years. Oh, in San right. Diego. In San Diego. And so he, there was, there's a few times that he would, he would, um, you know, start talking about some of the stuff that, that he uh, got, had to experience that I don't think anybody will ever experience again. It's, it's a little different now. He's talking about borderline full stadium capacity filled, you know, 30, 40,000 people for batting practice. It was it's crazy. To watch him hit BP. And he's like, you guys want to talk about pressure? That's pressure to go out from BP. People are coming to watch you hit homers. And then you go into the game and my, you might get one good pitch to hit. That's the crazy thing. I'm like, my goodness. Like, I know how I treat when we're facing Jose Abreu tonight, and I hope he might get one pitch to hit. You know, we're, we're not trying to give in to a guy like that, and Jose Abreu has 15 home runs. <laughs> if he had 59 home runs, he might get zero pitches to hit, but they have to be – the only way you get a, a pitch to hit is a pitcher tries to throw a ball and accidentally throws a, a barely a strike, and you hit a homer. And that type of – intensity that type of pressure uh, i mean that type of mental discipline to just step into the box every time and just take pitches and take pitches and finally get that one and you can't miss it uh it was pretty uh it was pretty cool to hear him talk about that kind of that kind of stuff and uh i can assume that that aaron judge is doing that type of thing because i know you know ain't nobody trying to give in and just you know too well gotta throw aaron judge a fastball can't walk him I'm like no this guy is not getting pitched to and still is hitting homers at an elite rate. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, I had Tyler Glass now on the show last week, and I asked him if he has a chance to face Judge, whom he's faced a lot. But if he has a chance to face him in the playoffs, why wouldn't he pitch around him? Like, why would you feed that guy anything? What's the philosophy if you get to the playoffs and you have to face the Yankees? I mean, why, if there's one out and nobody on base and here comes Aaron Judge, why the hell are you going to throw him a strike? It's situational for sure. Um, you know, I think ideally in those situations, like you don't throw him a strike uh, unless you have elite command with a, with a special type of pitch. But what you do is you just, you, you try and throw borderline pitches because you want to get him out. You don't want to walk. Him. You don't want, we don't like giving up free nineties, regardless of who you are. There's situations with guys on base where you already have guys in scoring position. You put guys, you put someone like that on but with nobody on base. Walking him definitely isn't the end of the world, so he doesn't hit a solo homer. But usually solo homers are not the difference in the game. Mm -hmm. Two-run, three-run homers is what kills you. Solo homers don't. Walks tend to kill you. So those are the situations where ideally I would like to just make bastard pitches that are like one ball out of the zone or two balls out of the K zone wherever I'm calling it. If I want a fastball in – I want it two balls in, you know, not five balls in. If I want a slider down and away, I want it one or two balls under and off the plate like that. Like that's my intent. And ideally getting him to swing at one of those, make weak contact and get out or make him make some good takes. So he, so he walks, but you're definitely not giving in to him if you fall behind. Fair enough. Um, I saw Tito get as mad as I have seen him against Ron Culpa recently. Like, part of it was hilarious. Part of it, I was scared shitless because of Tito's health concerns. It was on a check swing. Did Andres Jimenez get hit by the pitch? Guardians wanted to challenge. Didn't get the challenge in in time, according to the umps. And so Culpa's like, sorry, can't do it. And then Tito went nuts. What were you thinking? Oh, man, I was just enjoying the show. I, that plus... That plus Nevin in the next five minutes, both getting tossed. The whole debacle was was pretty entertaining to watch. I mean, I've I've watched the John Boy breakdown a few times. It's so funny. It is. It's it's so funny. That's basically all it was. It was it was a pretty silly situation. Uh, everything that was that really ended up happening. Uh, it's not even really worth talking about the 
what I, what, what actually ended up happening. But uh, the, the pure comedy was absolutely perfect. I mean, look at Tito. Holy smokes. And he was hilarious afterward. <laughs> so funny. Oh, my God. How's your fantasy football league? Are you 0 2? 2. Oh, Jesus. We've lost by a combined eight points. Ooh. Who's we? Me and Shane Bieber. And you are in the famous league, are you not? We are in the famous league. This is the former Mike Trout as the commissioner, Tommy Pham as a participant. How is it that I didn't even find that out until I talked to you recently? It, it, I got all kinds of things up my sleeve, Chris. I got plenty of material. Like I always tell you, this is just one of them. And this league is, this is a hot league. There is, there is side bets that are worth a lot of money that the whole league is doing <laughs> like side bets for head to head when you're not even playing each other for the whole season. There is a lot, a lot on the line. I've got like six group text threads going right now with trades because we're owing two. So everyone wants to fuck us. Basically everyone's just like, Oh, you're own two. We'll take your players. And they're offering us like backup kickers for Jamar chase. And we're just like, this sucks, but we're looking up. We'll be okay. Oh, and two sucks. We lost uh, we were up 34 and a half points going into Monday night. Playing against the one person you do not want to play against. And that was Jay Josh Allen. Allen. Oh, Josh Allen. Yeah, that's rough. He put up 37 points and didn't even play in the fourth quarter. That Who was heartbreaking. You? Who beat you? That was Jake Marisnik. And we lost to uh who did we lose to week one? Yelich. Oh. Yelich got us week one. By five, and we lost by three this week. Is Trout still in the league? Yeah. So the cool he- thing, what ended up happening is we replaced Tommy Pham with Dave Portnoy from Barstool. Ha! And so he's in the league with a terrible team that is dominating people. I don't get it. He's taking people head-to-head money. He's 2-0. and He has four quarterbacks. Four. It's embarrassing. I don't get it. But his team's good. And I'm on two, so I can't even talk. Do you play a super flex? No. It's a normal league. Why would you have four quarterbacks? You can only play one. This team's winning. That's ridiculous. It pisses me off. But Portnoy, so Portnoy replaced Fam, And then Stephen Che with Barstool is just the commissioner. So now we have just a commissioner, uh, which is pretty cool because he sends all these breakdowns and kind of keeps everything live on, on, on the media platforms and stuff. Uh, and it's cool, man. It's a, uh, it's pretty cool league. Musta- Mike Moustakis is dominating right now. He's going to be tough to take down. He's got one of those teams that looks like it's going to be good. Moustakis looks like one of those guys who could actually be like an NFL GM when it comes to like, he's a guy who's probably spends way too much time doing this. He probably does. And he's pretty damn good at it. Who is your team? Who's your team? We got Kyler Murray. Leonard Fournette, uh, about five of the worst running backs you could think of. Huh. And we have – we went receiver heavy. We got Jamar Chase. We got Mike Evans, who will be suspended. So, thanks, Mike. I got him. Um, Marquise Hollywood-Brown. That was our that was our dream stack, the Kyler Hollywood-Brown, and that just looks terrible. Just looks bad. I don't like that Cardinals team right now. No. they. I don't know how they escaped Vegas with a win, but Kyler – Sure did a hell of a job, man. I need him what he did in the fourth quarter to, for the rest of the game. But, yeah, yeah we don't want to be 0-2. It's a pricey league. Um, so, we're going to start turning things around. We made a bunch yeah. of waiver moves. Uh, now, now, now a lot of trade talks. Okay. I wish you luck. Who do you Thank play you. this week? We play – I don't know. I'll let you know right now. Golly, I just I open the app, I look at my team, and I'm like, you guys all suck. Stop treating professional. Oh, uh, we play the kid. We play Mike Trout. 
and it is exactly projected. We're, we're projected 115.1. He's projected 115.2. It's about right. Okay. All right. Let's go get him. We got to take down Trout. Let's be honest here. Does Trout really need to win any of this stuff? Of course he does it. He's got a $426 million contract. Enough. But he takes it seriously, which I love. And we did, we just played the Angels the other day in basically all every at bat little fantasy football talks. How about Eric Hosmer? What we you know how Jeff Wilson last week was kind of a big waiver pickup? Yes, for the Niners. Yeah. What would you have put what, what would you have put down for Jeff Wilson? Say you even had Elijah Elijah Mitchell. You mean a, a dollar waiver claim? Yeah, yeah, like fab. Well, what what do you have to what's your I, I don't know what the you have a hundred dollars. Yeah, hundred dollars for the year, right? And you okay. Put in whatever, I mean, just to get to the point. He put in a hundred dollars. He spent his whole bag, all of it, all of it. Jesus. Yeah, Haas ha, Haas is on my shit list right now. Haas tried to offer me. He wanted Leonard Fournette and Jamar Chase for Joe Mixon and Allen Robinson. Come on. I was stop. like, Haas, what are you doing? He goes, that's a fair trade. And then I offered him an actual fair trade, and then he – we're not on the same page. Yeah. Okay. No fisticuffs this year in that league. No, just open-hand slaps. Did, did you believe it the first time you heard that story that it had actually happened? 100%. Really? Oh, yeah. Think. It, it, it was uh, only because it was ugly. <laughs> How it all went down last year was ugly. It was not, a, it, it was not good. The process of leaving a, a fantasy league in like week two or three or whatever it was to get money back. And uh, the whole thing that happened was ugly and it was wild that it even happened. So the repercussions uh, actually did not surprise me. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's hilarious. I can I, I can believe it, but I can't believe it. Like it's 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 incredible. How many it's years great. have you par- how, have you participated in the league? This is the year two of the league. Oh, okay. We started it last year. Yeah, I'm I'm honored to be in it. It's quite the uh, it's quite the list of names in this league. Yeah. And someone dropped out. We, it, it, Christian Yelich was added. The leagues. It's there's some sexy names with quite a bit of money uh, behind their names. So um, I'm banking on. I'm, I'm trying to convince Shane Bieber to pay for all of it because uh, he'll eventually have that contract. He's yes. like, I don't even have any money yet. And I'm like, ah, save it, Shane. You're going to sign for like $350 million in like two years. <laughs> He's got a wedding to pay for. Yeah, <laughs> he'll be just fine. He'll be just fine. Let me tell who, you. So who else is it? It's Trout, Yelly, Hosmer. Moose, Haas, Bregman. Portnoy, uh, Jake Marisnik, uh, said Trout, Jock, and Jock, obviously. Fun league. It's a fun league. A lot of shit talking. A lot of shit talking, a lot of money on the line. <sighs> oh, and two. Before we uh, finish up here, I saw it was uh, Team Photo Day recently. There's always one guy on the team who spends way too much time in the mirror fixing this shit up. Who is that? We don't really have any, like, pretty boys on our team. We We really don't. don't. Like, I mean... Dude, look at Karen Check's photo, by the way. Shaq might have. That's actually <laughs> just cheesing. Honestly, Karen Check might have uh, might have done a little bit, but we we don't have a lot of guys that like to Nobody. that do that do that. Okay. We're just we're a ruggedly handsome group. We already said best looking catching tandem in the history of the sport. Exactly. That's why we didn't have to. I know Luke and I didn't have to do anything because we just roll out of bed and we're naturally handsome. Yeah. Just slightly better than Benito Santiago and Bruce Bochi. 
of the Padres back in the day. They were hot. Uh, let's spin the wheel. Get you back to the ballpark. I already did that. So you have your choice of mini me or grade A. Surprise me. I want to hear this, I guess. Grade A. What type of student were you in high school? Better than anybody you've ever had on your show. I don't think so. Trevor May was a valedictorian of his high school. Damn it. I, I mean, I graduated with a 4 2. What? I that means you were. B. I think I had one B in my whole life. And you went to a private school, Jay Sarah. That's pretty good down here in Southern California. Uh, so you took AP classes and honors? Oh, yeah. Like what? I took AP history, English. Uh, I think just two. I think I was taking two, maybe three, but just two AP and honors classes. Um, Pretty good. Yeah, one B, one B in high school, uh, in chemistry, my sophomore year. I think it was my only B in my life. I was a good you're student. Like, what would you have done if you hadn't been a really good catcher? Oh well, here's the thing. I mean, getting good grades in high school is just beating the system. I mean, you get like fifty percent of your grade is doing your homework. So what do I do? Do all my homework, uh, and then just memorize the right things. And I, I'm good with short-term memory. So I just, I don't really study until like the, late the night before the day of and just memorize what I can. And then I just go get it. I can't remember one thing I ever learned in high school. Uh, I, I don't like the, the education system to begin with. I don't think it teaches you to think. Uh, mm -hmm. Critical thinking skills, you know, decision-making, problem solving. I'd like to see more of that. I think that's real life stuff. So I, nothing I did in high school would have helped me in the real world. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I would have, I would have figured something out, but it would have been, it would probably had nothing to do with, uh, grades. Okay. Um, but I was, I was, I'm pretty good at, you know, seeing what, how, what's it take to get an A here. It doesn't take being smarter than anybody. It just takes a little effort in memorization. And I was good at that. Fair enough. It's good. I appreciate that. And I also appreciate, I, I'm, I don't think you've been on since you met my entire family, how nice it was. I forget if, where San Diego, we yeah. Yeah, in the last episode or whatever. And it was a pleasure to meet your parents. I loved meeting them. That was awesome. Good. They were yeah, they were they were they were they were thrilled to meet you too. Yeah, it was nice. My wife actually sat with them for a while in the ball, oh, ball nice. game because the day game there was some shade up there. I was like, "Go go sit with the hedges. Why not?" There you go. go Beautiful go day, ahead. San Diego, the Hogs return. Yeah. Cleveland wins both games. I, I mean, can't ask for we anything were, better. We were yelling for you. I don't know if you heard us as you were coming up to the plate on that. Yeah, Tuesday no night. ovation, no nothing. Just nope. uh, see ya. It's we okay. were. You were. That's all that matters to me. Every time I go to warm up a pitcher when Males is catching, you always give me love. That's my favorite. That was it. We gave you a standing ovation every time. you Because there were like three times. I don't know if hey, Bailey made the last out or if he was on base or whatever it was. But you had to go out there. You had to do a little extra work that day for that day game. You had to earn your check. Got to. Yeah. All right, dude, this was fun. Um, I'm excited. I'm just telling you, you should have seen me last night. Oh, I was pissed off when, like, a Abreu got that extra inning hit. And I was motherfucking the TV. And this is how you want your Cleveland fans, dude, tuned in. So Stay tuned in. More to come. Oh, I ain't going anywhere. So I'm happy. I'm proud of you guys. But let's keep pushing. Okay? Thanks, Chris. Awesome. You got it. For our outstanding, one-of-a-kind, Dylan Cease-looking producer, Robbie Scirocco, and the always entertaining Austin Hedges. I am Chris Rose. We will see you next time on the Chris Rose Rotation, a production of John Boy Media.